Thanks for tuning in to the Red Clinic Podcast, where we talk about eating disorder education. I'm Dr. Shwaylin, licensed psychologist and expert in the treatment of eating disorders. Today, I have Melissa Bloom, registered dietitian, expert in eating disorders, and also the director of the nutrition clinic at Red Clinic and Next Steps Worldwide. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Hi. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks for having me, as always. Oh, absolutely. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> we are going to talk about the third part of our discussion on macronutrients today. Yep. So why don't we just jump right in? Okay. Awesome. So today's topic is going to be, you have permission to not eat a large amount of protein <laughs> and really obsess about it, but. Okay. So yeah. permission to not eat a large amount of protein. Yeah. In the last two weeks, you've given us permission to eat more carbs to eat more fat mm -hmm. and to eat less protein now? Yes. I don't know, again, if I should turn you off or keep <laughs> listening. <laughs> I feel like just you saying that, Dr. Shaylin, I was like, whoa. I mean, it's basically like um, going against everything that we hear nowadays with what we're supposed to do with our diet. Um, but again, this, you know, I stem from science and as well as other dietitians, and that's what it's about and science and how our body operates and works and uh, what we hear in our society is often fad based and money based so uh, we can't really trust it so i'm glad i'm here to talk about these topics today i'm glad you're here today too so can you give us just a quick overview on the macronutrients again mm -hmm. um, kind of take us back into that space and then start talking about protein absolutely so we've talked about carbohydrates we've talked about proteins I'm sorry, we've talked about fats, and today we're going to talk about proteins. Okay. Uh, carbohydrates are really our main source of fuel. Uh, fats is, are our main source of fuel for our organs, per se. So they provide protection to our brain. Uh, fat does not make you fat. And now we're going to talk about proteins. All right, let's do it. Okay, so what exactly are proteins? Uh, proteins are um, the building blocks of our bodies, um, our diets. They really provide every uh, structural component to who we are as humans. Um, and they provide different enzymatic reactions to everything that goes on in our body. And so, so protein is, is vital. Uh, what else does protein do? Protein makes us muscular. Protein makes us <laughs> muscular. <laughs> protein so. makes us feel fuller. Yes. Um, I could, I mean, yeah. there's so many conceptions about protein out there, right? Yeah. So, so essentially what I want you guys to really understand about proteins is that they are um, a part of every different reaction that goes on in our bodies. Um, they are not our source of fuel, which a lot of people do think um, that they are. They're not our preferred source of fuel for our bodies. So, um, so yeah. So, essentially, we were made to, um, I guess, process carbohydrates as our main source of fuel. Mm -hmm. But because of what's been going on these days, um, I think uh, we see it all the time in clinic, right, where clients are taking in an excess of protein, they're cutting out carbs, they're cutting out fat. Yep. And it's not just red clinic clients. It's no. not just clients that have eating disorders that are doing this. It's right. people out there every day that are on a diet, right? Yep. So there's fad diets like you alluded to. Yes. I mean, the thing that pops up into my mind are like Atkins diet, um, keto diet. Mm -hmm. There's just so much out there. I mean, literally la yesterday I was doing an assessment with a 14 year old female who was presenting to clinic um, just for an overall psychological assessment because she has been feeling really anxious lately and her mom was really worried about her. And what I found out is that actually just a few weeks ago, she was instructed by a GI specialist mm. to cut out carbs and to increase her protein in her diet with vegetables, so protein and vegetables, because she just recovered from H. pylori, which mm, is okay. a, a bacterial gut infection, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And so it's so common in the Red Clinic when we see kids and adults who might experience H. pylori or some kind of bacterial infection, and then they end up actually going on to develop an eating disorder 
because it's scary to eat. Mm -hmm. They may associate pain, discomfort with food. And that's exactly what this teenager has done. So when I was doing the assessment with her yesterday, she talked about how in just a few weeks, she's become an extremely picky eater. And she's really picky because it used to hurt a lot to eat before they figured out how to treat her. And even though medically her issues have resolved, she's still really nervous to eat anything except for protein and vegetables now. But when I heard the GI specialist is the one who told her to reduce her intake and to just go into this like excess protein place, mm -hmm. I was kind of blown away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do honestly is call him and do a little bit of educating and try to find out like what's going on, why this diet was prescribed. Yep. Because now what I'm seeing is that it's actually the beginning of keeping this eating disorder going. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many providers who may not be um, uh, really, you know, experts in nutrition. And so my number one thought was refer to a dietitian um, always. Um, and I think just as human beings, especially as a teenager, you know, we take things to the extreme. And so when someone says, and our messages as well, so when someone tells us, hey, let's cut out carbs, that means zero. And that's really not great. Um, and so that created a lot of issues for this this teenager, just that piece of advice. Um, so really being careful um, with providing nutritional advice, especially around let's cut this out, let's cut this carb out, let's cut this protein out, let's cut these fats out. And usually it's cut carbs, let's be honest. Right. And I think that leaves people kind of stuck. They... I mean, it's confusing, especially for a teenage girl. Um, she trusts her medical professionals and uh, people everywhere. So, I, you know, I brought yeah. up the fad diets because we can see it on the magazine covers. We can see it everywhere um, in social media. But we're also getting that advice from medical professionals. Yeah. yeah. So how come, scary. how come protein has this reputation of being kind of the solution to all our problems? I really feel like it does stem from... Uh, our obsession with weight loss. So as I was talking about with carbohydrates, when we were on that macronutrient, a lot of that uh, macronutrient is made of uh, water. So when we restrict it, we lose weight. But in absence of carbohydrates, what else are we going to eat? Protein and fat. And so we have to make up for that total caloric intake by eating something. And it's not going to be carbs based on what our society really tells us or medical professionals. So that I really do believe has increased our protein intake and this protein obsession. And so many people, especially I feel like in the Southern states, love their meats, you know, and so bacon and pork and all these different things. And uh, they'll be happy to eat large quantities of those foods um, as long as they're losing weight. Right. And then for those that are on maybe like a vegan diet, find different sources of protein. Right. And, and I remember just the other day over lunch, I was asking you, hey, are there any like side effects or things that people need to consider when they're eating artificial sources of protein, or I don't even know if they're artificial. Mm, it's so yeah, confusing, they're like manufactured. Right? right. Or like you see whey protein concentrate in different products. And yep. so you can go to the grocery store now and buy a cookie that's a high protein cookie. Yeah. Right. And that's not a natural source of protein usually. No, it's not. So what, I mean, I guess that's a real specific question, yeah. but what do we need to know about those sources of protein? I think when we consider protein consumption in our diet, it's always better from a natural source. Um, and I say better, um, it's just more easily digested. There's not as many additional components to it. Um, it's like the concept when we talked about fats, it's like making something low fat. That's not supposed to be low fat. So, um, a cookie is really not supposed to be high in protein. <laughs> that honestly sounds kind of gross. Um, those cookies aren't bad. I've had them before, but, um, you know, it's, it doesn't taste, uh, um, normal. It doesn't feel intuitive to okay. have, to have foods like that. Right. And so it's obviously kind of been tweaked or manufactured. It's been messed with essentially. Yeah. To appeal, to appeal to the common consumer. Okay. That's the only reason why it's in there. And the common consumer is one who, who's taking in excess protein. 
and who, yes, taking in excess protein because we're following a low carbohydrate, low carbohydrate diet because we may want to lose weight. Okay. So what are the side effects of taking in too much protein? This is my favorite because I have a story um, from a, uh, a friend who actually um, ended up in the hospital for uh, kidney and liver, I believe it was kidney failure in uh, elevated liver enzymes. Um, and essentially the liver really processes all different kinds of nutrients. So, um, so that can put a lot of pressure on our liver. So that's why that is elevated. And he was consuming uh, a number, like you were talking about, Dr. Schwalen, artificial or manufactured protein sources via protein powders, protein supplements, and then consuming over 200 grams of protein every day. And that's a pretty excessive amount. And I remember telling this person, my friend, hey, you really should watch out for this. Like this causes this and this causes that. And two weeks later, this person ended up in the hospital. And I think that was a sign for him um, at 25 years old. So it wasn't normal to experience that. And um, I got a text message saying, you were right. <laughs> well, <Huh. laughs> you know, it makes me think of um, of someone almost having to hit rock bottom mm -hmm. because eating too much protein is kind of our society's addiction yep. at this point. Yep. Yep. So excess protein can cause a number of things. And one of my favorite conversations, as Dr. Shailen knows, is poop. Um, <laughs> it does cause constipation. And the reason for that is because proteins are made up of amino acids. And so you'll hear that jargon in like um, uh, supplements too, like amino acids. Uh, those are essentially proteins. And there's some amino acids that you can get from your diet, and there's some that you make internally in your body naturally, as long as you're a healthy individual. Um, and those amino acids are made up of nitrogen. And when our body has excess nitrogen, we take along fluids with that to get rid of it. So if we have an excess protein um, intake, then we're going to rid our body of fluid hence causing constipation if we don't consume enough fluid. So a lot of times I hear uh, our patients saying, I'm not, I'm not thirsty. I'm not thirsty. Even when we're not thirsty, our body may be, especially when we have an elevated protein intake. Um, and it's not fun to be constipated when you're on a high protein diet. Okay. <laughs> so that is one side effect that is my favorite um, to talk about. Um, and then that goes alongside of dehydration. So um, when we're ridding our body of fluid from excess nitrogen, then obviously that can lead to fluid loss. That can lead to being dehydrated. Uh, either of those things don't sound great when we're consuming a high protein diet. <sighs> All right, I, I, the list is going on. Well, so, I mean, it's pretty scary, some of the side effects of eating too much protein. Yeah. And is it until they've hit rock bottom? Mm -hmm. So eating disorder or not, people end up in the hospital. Yeah. I think that we may not even pay attention to it, you know, especially if we're losing weight from a low carbohydrate. We're just starting a low carbohydrate diet. We're losing all that water weight. We're on that, that route of success, quote unquote. So we're not going to pay attention to the negative side effects of something. Okay. We're accomplishing everything we want. Right. And so, you know, that actually, this is such a segue and totally um, a different episode, but it kind of reminds me of clients who have had like bariatric surgery, mm -hmm. for example, the, um, the depletion and the mm -hmm. malnutrition and like the side effects of all of that are so miserable yep. for those clients, but they won't talk about them right. because of the positive feedback that they're getting from everybody yes. and the fact that they're supposed to feel good because they've done this thing to their body. Yep. So no one really wants to put it out there that actually they don't feel very good at all. Right, right. Um, and then the big um, side effect that Dr. Shwelen was mentioning and, and with my friend as well, that story is uh, kidney failure. I mean, that doesn't happen to everyone, but that is a risk factor because it puts so much pressure in ridding your body of the excess nitrogen um, that, 
your kidneys could give out or a kidney and that ends you up in the hospital. And I was also thinking that with our clients too, um, who struggle, uh, with restrictive, uh, tendencies and restrictive water tendencies too, um, that puts your risk really high of dehydration and constipation. Um, also typically low or high protein diets are low carb, which also is low fiber. So that doesn't help our bowel movements either. I don't know. That just sounds so miserable to me. Right. And it, I mean, you're talking about like, uh, you know, these macronutrients when together, you know, in a good uh, moderation balance, whatever it is, right. Um, things are just running smoothly. You know, people think clearly they get their bodies getting everything that they need. And then when people kind of get too much in their head about it Mm -hmm. they might start listening to a fad diet or they might think they know what's right for their body they end up messing up this natural order of just the way things are supposed to be yes i describe it a lot as homeostasis our body's balance you know, and, and that becomes a priority for us losing weight or looking a certain way or fitting a certain size. And then we lose all sight of what actually that's doing internally for our processes. When we talk about the function of macronutrients, that alone, I mean, that does so much for you. It's your body's fuel source, your structure source, our immunity. Um, and when we lose sight of that, that is again, not intuitive at all. Okay, so just one more question before we wrap it up today. When you're working with a client with an eating disorder, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what kind of eating disorder they have, and you're trying to talk about macronutrients and kind of homeostasis, what kind of approach do you usually take? And um, I guess, how do clients deal with it? Yeah. You know, because I I was joking, but I wasn't in terms of like, I don't know if I should turn you off right now or listen. (laughs) I mean, that's exactly what's going to go on for our clients. Yeah. I mean... uh, In nutrition sessions, we do have to consider in treatment in general that people have been given these messages um, and they've been taken to an extreme, right, for some of our clients in the form of an eating disorder. And some of our clients are um, middle aged and these messages have been, you know, um, they've been inundated with them for quite some time. And so the amount of trust that it takes for myself or other dietitians to really say, hey, yo, everything you've learned is untrue. That takes a lot of stepping outside of our comfort zone um, for our clients. So respecting that. So coming from an approach of grace, coming from an approach of balance, patience, understanding that if there is like a big component of, I have a lot of my food fears or foods that I may overeat or binge on are carbohydrates. How can I have more of a view of balance for those things? And am I missing other things in my diet? Same thing with proteins and fats. Um, So it's really from a place of compassion and grace and uh, patience in educating people that really a balance is everything. And what we have learned in our society is just blown out of proportion and untrue. And this is actually what is science. Okay. And so it's unfortunate, you know, because when we break it down like this in terms of three macronutrients, the way that they work to create homeostasis in our bodies in a very natural way. And then we talk about like eating disorders and society and, and just diets and the information we're getting, Mm -hmm. how that's all made such a basic and almost simple concept. Yeah. So complicated. Yeah. And confusing. Yeah. Um, It's funny because as we talk about these macronutrients and things like that, it's like back to the basics for me as a dietitian. But it's so hard to like say these things of, okay, so this is, this is what we learned in, in our education and our schooling. Like how are, is everyone else hearing something different? I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense, but it does. Um, And that's where I get on my soapbox with with our dieting culture and money. Um, but yeah, you know, something that is, you know, goes back down to balance, intuition, listening to our body's cues, um, not feeling fear of being judged for what we eat either our body shape and size. And so we've made a simple nutrition is a complex science. Don't get me wrong, but eating can be simple and we don't have to overthink it. Right. 
Well, and I'm so glad you said back to the basics because we've done episodes like that here on the Red on the mm-hmm. Red Clinic podcast just you know a couple weeks ago in terms of talking about back to the basics and what that looks like from a family perspective and just sitting down together and the psychological benefits of some of those things and yep. you know really helping families and clients just get back to the basics in some serious um, context with the psychology of it and the nutrition of it mm-hmm. is so key when we're talking about treating eating disorders. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Melissa, for joining us today. Thank you. Is there any kind of permission you want to give us at the end of today's episode? You have the permission to not obsess or overeat protein. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's it.